Creating motion backgrounds for titles or video is a common task. I'm going to show you how you can use three simple Sapphire filters as the building blocks to transform any footage into an animated moving tunnel. We're in Resolve and this is the clip that we're going to start with. Now, as you'll see, as we start moving through, we can use these same techniques with pretty much any clip. I'm going to say that this type of effect works best when you have clips that have a bit of uh, contrast in them. But we'll, we'll talk more about that later. So the first thing to do is to get the basic shape of our tunnel. And I'm going to go into our Sapphire filters and I'm going to come down to the distort effect. One of the things I really like about using effects in Resolve is that we can kind of preview what they're going to look like just by uh, hovering over the top of them. Um, so we get a nice little idea or a nice little preview of what's happening. So let's come over to Warp Vortex, just double click to apply that and we can play that back. And this is the default values to it. So we've got a water circling the drain almost. Now, if I come over to my inspector, go into the effects, I can see that my Warp Vortex is applied. And with every effect, whenever I'm looking for a bit of inspiration or to just explore what an effect can do, I'm always going to start with presets. So if I hit load preset, we come into the Sapphire preset browser and I can see the presets that are associated with this effect. And I've got a few here that actually would make some good starting points. Um, like a record is, is kind of cool, but I'm going to go with Tunnel Traveler. What can make Sapphire presets even more useful is the fact that they do all have descriptions on them as well. So it often tells us what we need to do with this. So I'm going to hit load in on this one here and we play this back. And it is definitely the starting point for a for a tunnel. Back over in the inspector, I'm going to change my center so it is exactly in the center. So that's going to be 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. And I can start to animate this up a little bit. So there's a couple of things that we can change. We can change our warp start. You can see that's looked pretty nice there. And we can also change the Z distance to give us a different look to the number of uh, loops that we have in there. So I'm going to do a combination of both. So let's uh, start by adding in keyframes on the Z distance and on the vortex start. And I'll come to the end and we can choose whether we're going to zoom forward. Let's should we zoom forward, zoom backwards. Let's zoom forward. And I'm going to bring my zoom start up. There we go. So let's move that there. And I will change the Z distance lower a little bit as well, just to reduce the number of stripes. So it looks like we're going deeper into the tunnel. Now we have some movement in here, but I'm going to show you a little trick how we can emphasize that feeling of, of movement forwards using another distort filter. And this is actually a trick that I use a lot of the time for situations where I need a sort of 3D push without actually going into 3D. Uh, and I'm going to use Warp Fisheye. And if we take a look, let's come over to the inspector again, open up Warp Fisheye. I'm only going to look at one of the controls, and that is a mount. See, moving back and forward, rip, rip, so we can sort of distort that going in and out. Now, this technique that I'm about to show you actually works on the same principle as a uh, optical illusion. And this optical illusion is around parallax. So our brain interprets things moving faster in a scene as being closer towards us. If you look out of a train window, you'll see that the trees that are right next to the, the train tracks move a lot faster than the hills in the background. And we're going to exploit that to give us a bit more of a sense of movement. So I'm going to uh, keyframe my amount from zero, come over here, and I'm going to send this in a negative direction. And you'll see that this is going to push out the areas closest to the, to the edges. And I'm going to bring this up until it starts to, to warp too much. So it's around about 0.25. Anything warping too much there, you can see it's, it kind of starts to warp into, it, into itself. And we're going to avoid that. Let's play that back. 
If the playback starts to stutter a little bit here, I can do one of two things. I can either turn my timeline proxy down, which works out, or I can set my smart render uh, going. So we'll just turn the, the timeline proxy down a little bit. Probably get away with taking that to half res, I think. Yeah. So now if we look with the warp fisheye uh, in and animated, it looks like the areas at the edges are faster. So this is a depth cue that we've just given using warp fisheye. I'm going to add another depth cue in here as well, because I want to draw the eye of the viewer uh, further in towards the uh, in towards the tunnel. I'm going to use a vignette. So I'll come up, I'm going to search S underscore vignette. There we go and add that into the mix. And most people are going to be familiar with a vignette. Uh, it adds a bit of uh, darkening around the edges. So I turn my opacity up and down. You can see that's darkened, darkens around the edges. And what this does is it focuses the eye because when we first look at an image, our eyes are always going to be drawn to the brightest parts of that image. So by darkening down the edges, we're now focusing on the on the center and that's going to help to to sort of build up those those cues. The other thing that we can do in Sapphire's vignette is add a bit of a blur. So I can blur that as well. Again, when we're looking at stuff, we're looking at towards the sharpest stuff first before we you know look look outside of that. So if we do a quick playback on that. You can see that working. All right, I kind of like this, except for one thing. I'm not you know, really happy about the color. So I could use another color effect, but we're in Resolve, right? So all I have to do is pop into the color room. Uh, what should we do here? Let's just change the hue up a little bit here, maybe. Yeah, kind of like that. Play that through. Get rid of our gallery. Give us a bit more space. And maybe I can add a bit more contrast here by taking down the gamma bumping up the gain, changing up the hue a bit more. And then really figuring out where that hue should be. Actually, I kind of, I like that green. I, yeah, that's good. So I'm come back in here and I'm pretty much done with what I need. So I can turn on the render cache now. We'll just have a little look at what that's going, what that's doing. Maybe I'll adjust the radius or the height on this a little bit. Yeah, and that's that's looking pretty good. I like that. Now we've got this sorted out for one clip. I just want to show you how easy it is to to get different results with different clips. Because I just cho chose a uh, a random clip when I I was starting to put this together, but we have lots of other different random clips to do this. So I'm just going to uh, select this clip and copy our mask clip. Come over to our next clip and paste attributes. Now. I'm going to turn off everything on video attributes and just turn on plugins. I only want to copy the plugins over the top. If we play this back now, we can see that we're getting a similar but different effect on this same clip. Uh, and because when I copied the attributes over, I didn't stretch the timing of the keyframes. So we can just do that manually here or just change up the keyframes a little bit. So I'll just turn that off there and there, come to the end. And then drag this up a little bit as well. And like anything, you'll probably find that you need to make a few small changes when you apply this to different footage. And that's just adding three effects together. And you should never really think about Sapphire effects as individual filters. Think of them as building blocks. So you can start with something very straightforward and then just add little bits to it to create a bigger, more involved effect. We don't have to stop at the three. If we take a look at this timeline, I've done used exactly the same clips as we had in the uh, the start. In the first one, I've just added a bit of ultra glow, just to give us some sparkles. Second one is almost the same, just a slightly uh, different animation. The third one, I've copied over the exact same filters again, but just added in ultra glow. And I have a whole video about Ultra Glow that I will uh, link in the description so you can just see what that's going to be like. Love Ultra Glow. 
The only thing that I've changed from the previous one is I've added in an S shape. So this S shape is just a little black shape in the middle, just so we don't get that little cinnamon swirl right in the center. So we've just got a bit more of an idea of it falling into, uh, into blackness. And that's really it. What I wanted to show you in this short tutorial was not just how we can create a, uh, an animated tunnel using just about any source footage with three simple effects. I also wanted you to think about combining Sapphire filters in a creative way to get a sort of transformative, useful and repeatable result. And we used Warp Vortex to create the initial tunnel shape. We used Warp Fisheye to help to give us some more visual clues about how fast or slow things were working by animating in the edges. And then using S Vignette to add depth cues to strengthen the idea of traveling and movement. And then of course, how we can build on top of those to create even bigger effects. My name is Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects, and I'll see you again soon. If you enjoyed this tutorial and you'd like to see more like it, then please leave a comment below. Of course, if you have an idea for future tutorials, then let us know down below as well. If you want to try out Sapphire, then head on over to borisfx.com, where you'll also find hours of free training for Sapphire and all of the Boris Effects products.